I bought this industrial contactor from a Chinese seller in eBay because I was kind of interested in seeing what the quality is like because these are a really standard component in places like China where they've got a huge number of factories. So to put things into perspective, a contactor is the industrial equivalent of a relay, whereas relays are fine for low loads um, where you want to interface, say, a low-voltage uh, control circuit to switch. Well, in this case, you could switch mains with it, but at modest uh, current. In the case of the contactor, it's just it's somewhat more rugged than a relay. It's designed to switch high loads like motors and uh, heating loads. So this one came from a seller called SAG222, SAG222, that's quite easy to remember. And it's a range called CGX2. And the voltage ratings, you've got a choice. Um, I think this one was 24 volts, 36, 110, 220 and 380 volts. So kind of aimed at the Chinese industrial supply there but you can also from other suppliers pretty sure you can get the 12 volt version as well in the UK it's either going to be a sort of 230 volt coil sort of for the European standard or it's going to be a 24 volt coil where it's just being driven by a, a PLC programmable logic controller and um, yeah let's take a look at this then Oh, it was only about £7.18, that's buttons really. Um, they used to be so much more expensive to buy. So you've got the coil inside and that brings in the contact plunger here. A common thing people do when they're trying to troubleshoot equipment is get a screwdriver and poke that in. You have to be very careful when you're doing that. If you've got a, a three-phase supply feeding a motor with star delta start and you've got contactors that are not interlocked, because you can get interlocking kits for these that uh, stop them uh, if one goes in, the first one that's in stops the other going in. But uh, if you've not got interlocked contactors, interlocked, interlocked contactors, and you jam one of these in the screwdriver, then it can actually cause a dead short circuit, uh, depending on the state of the other contactor. Uh, and even in con some control systems, if you jam one in, it will actually trigger the control system through an auxiliary contact and it can bring another one in and cause a bit of a apocalyptic result. So proceed with caution if ever doing anything like that. Um, the unit, uh, let's uh, check it out, see how much power it takes. This is a 220 volt coil, and I've got it wired up to a plug at the moment, so I'm going to plug it into the hoppy. So that's just clunked in and is humming gently as they do. And it's drawing about just under 50 milliamps, about 3.5 watts. And the power factor is about 0.293 because this is a purely inductive load. An interesting thing to note, sometimes uh, uh, with badly designed control systems, if you actually jiggle contactors on and off, uh, it can actually crash the control computer. And there was a company that shall remain nameless in the refrigeration industry whose control systems were absolutely notorious for that, literally. It would, the control system would bring the contactor in and then it would do this. And each time it was doing that, that would be the process of crashing and resetting and then trying to bring it back in again, and then it would crash again. It was quite interesting, while it displayed absolute gobbledygook on its display. So now we've tested that. I should say I've had this running for a while and it didn't get excessively warm, so that's pretty good as well. Um, let's take a closer look. So let's get these terminals out first and I shall put that plug in a safe place because it's got a bare end, so I shall throw it well away from the bench at the moment. Never leave flexes with bare ends sticking out, just in case someone else finds them. That's not a problem here because I just live on my own. So the contactor has a DIN rail mount in the back. Now, what does that mean again? Deutschland International Normal, is it? I'm not 100% sure now that I think about it, but it goes in the standard uh, DIN, rail, DIN rail and it just clicks on like this. And to release it, you pop a screwdriver in here, just lift that up gently and it'll pop off. It's just a standard industrial mounting system. It lets you stack a lot of these together. It's got four sets of contacts from side to side. And these contacts uh, are just straight across. And in most instances, they're normally open contacts. So going across from one side to the other, if I push that plunger in, it will show continuity from either of these, any of these contacts to the other side. Sometimes you've got high current contacts and sometimes you've got a mixture of high current and low current signal contacts. Plus, you can get other contacts that clip onto the top and are actuated by this plunger. Or uh, you can get auxiliary modules that go in the side as well. It's a very uh, versatile system that has evolved over time. The coil 
has two connections here, but one of them is mirrored on the other side. That's just a straight link through from one side to the other. I can prove that by bringing the meter back in again. So if I go on to what's uh, referred to in this one, it's A2. They're usually called A1, A2, the coil contacts. So if I put it across like that, it's just straight continuity across. And the reason for that is that in a panel, you might have all the neutrals at one side of it and uh, all the lives the other. It's just so that you can, it gives you an option of which side you bring the cables in onto the contactor. This little white tab here is strictly, a, it's a label. It's designed for just uh, labeling the contactor as to its uh, function or a reference to the drawing. So let's uh, take this apart. I'm noting here that it has slight scallops next to the uh, terminals, the coil terminals. I'm thinking that's so you can get a screwdriver down to actually physically screw it onto a, sur a surface if you want to just drill and tap or use nuts and bolts to fix it to a surface. Oh yeah, and uh, they're sort of angled here to match that. Okay. Tin rail's always a good option though. So let's see if we can open this and how easy it would be. Well, I don't think it would be cost effective to change the coil. But these are usually very modular. And uh, the expensive industrial contactors, you can buy new coils for them. Or just swap the voltage. Because uh, usually when the coil assembly comes out, it's got the voltage marked on it, so you can just change the contactor to suit. And that's handy when you've got an industrial environment, uh, because you can have a number of different uh, coil voltages just spare for contactors. Oh, okay. And it keeps your stock down to minimum. So here is the coil, and it's got a e core at the back with little rubber pads. For acoustic isolation, I guess. Oh, it's got a, it's got a little rubber pad at the back here for acoustic damping, and then they keep it centered so it is it's purely acoustic because otherwise these are quite buzzy. It's also worth noting that it's got a shunt. Uh, they've got a notch and a little shunt pressed into it, and that will also have a slight damping effect on the the buzz that causes a slight phase shift in the coil, I believe, and uh, creates a. a a more solid, it means that it's less like to buzz fundamentally. If you want super silent contactors, go for DC contactors. So the main thing about the coil, there's that uh, common link all the way through, is that the main variation between these will be that if it's a lower voltage one, say for instance it was a 12 volt one, uh, that will have roughly the same amount of windings on it, but it will be a smaller number of turns of much thicker wire. I suppose, ultimately, if you had a really specialist voltage, you could actually strip this off and wind one yourself. Or, if it hadn't burnt out completely and damaged the core, sloppy soldering there, uh, you could theoretically rewind these, but it's not recommended. You know, in an industrial application, uh, the only time I'd consider ever doing something like that would be if you just could not get an identical replacement that would fit in a specific application. But that's kind of, that's never really happens. It's just, that's just me making up last resort situations. Um, I also want to mention that I wouldn't use one of these necessarily in an industrial application. If you've got a professional application at a factory and you're a maintenance engineer, don't start buying stuff from China for it. Although this stuff may be good, um, there's no guarantee of quality. You just you just don't 100% know how long it's going to last. And it's generally better, given that the factories can lose a lot of money if the machines are down, to just use the proper components. That also avoids liability. Having said that, I should think that this is probably... Um, you know, it looks... Uh, China, it's got loads of factories, you know. It's going to have... Um, it's got justification to... Uh, is this the right way up? Yes, it is. It's got justification to make, you know, good quality stuff like that. So let's uh, see what else we can do here. Let's, uh, that comes off. Are these contacts going to come out? Do I even need to pull that out? Would it actually just slide out on its own? Oh, you know what? That comes out. That bit pops out as well. And that will theoretically let these contacts pop out then. Long nose pliers. Yeah. The contacts, they're not super large contacts. They're actually very similar to that little relay. 
Yeah, the contacts are about the same diameter as the ones in the relay, but they will be, in this case, they'll be slammed together with quite considerably more force, it being a contactor. So theoretically, if I pulled all these out, uh, you could then re remove the whole plunger. Let's see how the whole thing's constructed. Is it going to come out? Oh, you, uh, you have to wind those screws up first. Let's strip the whole thing to bits. Oh, more. Yeah. It kind of, the when these are tightened down, it kind of locks those contacts in place, aside from the uh, the little shroud that went over it. But it really is. All the way down, those screws are enormous. They're designed to take large cables. That's interesting. Generally speaking, when connecting onto these, you'd use wire ferrules uh, designed to uh, basically make a good solid contact so you've not got loose strands in there. Now, these contacts, that's interesting. These are much bigger contacts. So that one there was an auxiliary contact. That would be like the three phases uh, controlling a motor, and then this one is a much lower current one, so that's worth noting. Yeah, they've got it marked here, T1, T2, T3, and then just normally open, so that is an auxiliary contact. Let's uh, pop these all off. It can go back together afterwards. I don't immediately have need for a contactor, but you just never know. So let's uh, whip the whole thing to bits and then pop the uh, internal contact block out and see what it looks like. Now, things worthy of note. The health and safety executive thinks that everybody should uh, turn the power off before diagnosing faults. They don't realise that in some instances, contactors can fail in such a manner that if a contact's pitted, you can uh, end up that the contactor looks as though it's pulled in, but it's not making connection through that circuit. And when you manually push the plunger in, it doesn't always mate in the same way, so it can be misleading. It can give an indication that uh, there's a silly contact that, you know, it's working. Or should I say, it can give, when you push it in manually, it won't necessarily sit in the same way as it would if it was pulling in magnetically. So sometimes it's better actually troubleshooting the power on. So here's the set of contacts. There's the auxiliary contacts there. So if you're absolutely desperate, you could... Does this uh, come out easily or is it uh, clipped in? How is that held in? Oh, like that then. Oh, it's got a little bar and it just bayonet cap. It just slides into a, a groove. Okay, now we know. So there's the contacts. I'm guessing the contacts will probably lift out as well. There's the spring that's just going to fly across the room. So there's the contacts. They're quite chunky, really. They're not too bad. And it looks like they're, they're based in copper with a plating on the top. Um, another thing, if when you're troubleshooting... If the contactor's pulled in and you have the power on, and keep in mind that the health and safety executive doesn't like you working with the power on, but uh, in many instances it's easier to find the fault. I shouldn't encourage it, but you know what? In reality, that's if you're a professional electrician, this is what you do. Uh, if the contactor's in and you want to check if you're getting continuity, if there's a problem with the contacts in it, if you put your meter across both sides of the contact while it's in, you should get no voltage across it, because when it's pulled in, it should be shorted out. If you're getting voltage across a contact that's pulled in, uh, the two contacts, then it means that one of them's gone high resistance and it immediately shows you've got bad contacts in that contactor and you can get a replacement. So, um, yeah, it's, it's an awful lot. It's lots of bits, but having said that, keep in mind this is a mass-produced item. It's quite nice. It, it actually looks quite acceptable inside. I would consider using this for a sort of home workshop-type project. Um, I suppose it would be fine a factory, but you just can, you can't you know you can't start buying cheapy components in an industrial environment. You have to cover yourself by getting uh, proper components in case something horrible happens, like a coil burning up and the plastics not self extinguishing and stuff like that. And then you suit out the whole panel, so that's not a good idea. But yeah, that's all right actually. I think that's quite neat. Now I'm going to put it back together, and that's it back together and. Working. Excellent. I want to mention another thing. You have to choose carefully for the loads. Now, this thing is rated in the side, it says, for 220 volts. It's rated about 18 amps. Uh, right, uh, 380 volts, 18 amps, 660 volts. That's a weird voltage. 
uh, 12 amps. So I would actually always generally overrate a contactor. You know, if I wanted it to switch 18 amps, I'd choose something that was much higher than 18 amps. Uh, just because it reduces the load and the, the wear on the contacts. And some time ago, I was uh, picking materials up in an electronic distributor in the UK called RS Components. And RS Components, they're what I'd call the Rolls Royce of the supply companies in the UK. They're, uh, if you want good quality industrial components and you want them fast, then RS Components is it. You know, if you go there and they don't have it in stock, they'll have it there for the next morning or they'll deliver it to the factory. It's For factory maintenance, it's just an essential service. You know, if you get a contact going down and the machine's off, then, you know, you want to get it back up and running as fast as possible. And while I was in there at the trade counter picking some stuff up, uh, this old guy came in, it's a general handyman maintenance man, and he just walked up to the counter, slammed down a contactor and said, this is faulty. And the staff were like, oh, I'm really sorry, um, can, can we help you resolve this? Because they're very good, their backup uh, is really good. And he was shouting and ranting at them about how he powered it up and it jammed in and the contact stuck in and it wouldn't come back out again and it was faulty and you had to really whack it to make him come out and you're thinking, oh, blimey. And uh, I asked him what he was driving with it and he said it was a uh, car park lighting. And I said, is it metal halide light fixtures? And he said, yes, it was. And uh, I said, well, that's the inrush current to the power factor correction capacitors because when you're controlling an awful lot of floodlights that have these big capacitors inside for power factor correction. Initially, when you power that load up, it's almost like a dead short as you charge those capacitors up. And that does weld contacts in. It's, it's just a commonly known thing if you're an electrician. In this case, he didn't know that. So I explained to him that though the contactor was rated well for what appeared to be a load, that's what had happened. And he wouldn't back off. He, he wouldn't. He just, he, even though I just told him why the contactor had failed, and I suppose maybe I should have kept my mouth shut, but then he'd, all he'd have done is just get an identical contactor and knacker that as well. But uh, he just wouldn't accept that. And uh, so he got his money back and stormed out, which you're thinking, well, I know, uh, knowing RS, they'd just, they'd just send the contactor back to their... Uh, they have uh, a lab that they'll send things back if they fail, and they'd have just opened it up and seen what had happened. Uh, and that would not go back in the shelf. That's a, a very good thing about that company. They're they're very high quality that way. So um, if you're wanting to control a lighting load, you have to get lighting rated contactors because if uh, there is a high inrush current to capacitors, then you know that causes a big problem with the con contacts closing together and then there's such a pop of current that it actually makes them stick together. That is, in a way, kind of alleviated by the presence of what are called NTC inrush thermistors that are commonly found in modern LED lights, the power supplies for them, that just basically they limit the initial inrush current and uh, keeps it to a controlled level. Also, the LED lights are a much lower load, so it's not so critical. But, uh, that's worth keeping in mind for any switch modey type power supply, that when you put an awful lot of uh, capacitive loads on something like a contactor, it can actually cause problems. But you know what? Overall, uh, I quite like this. It seems well made, for certainly for home industrial projects or prototypes, this is actually quite acceptable.